What's going on, everyone? Here's a quick video, um, kind of a mod that I'm doing for a very special customer of mine. Um, basically, he wanted the Klon Centaur um, enclosure, but this is actually a, a Cheerio Tone Centura that I'm going to take the brand off at a later time here in the build. But here is my TS10 circuit board, and it's going to go inside of this enclosure. Um, so some of the th challenges with that is that the circuit board obviously wasn't designed to fit in this enclosure. So I had to be a little creative and extend these wires, which, um, you know, I'll kind of go over the pros and cons in a little bit. But the idea is to take the circuit board and try to find a way to securely mount it in here um, because this particular gentleman uh, tours... So this thing needs to be tour duty. Uh, so what I'm thinking here, and it's a little tight right now because of the wires I'm using. I just started using um, this aerospace grade high temp. The same stuff I use in my amps, I'm starting to use in these pedals. Um, so there's a little stiffer than, than my normal PVC. But what I did was, if we can sort of align it properly, come on, buddy. Uh... I can have this circuit board securely mounted on that PCB um, alpha pot here. And when I solder that down, that would be, you know, super secure. Uh, and that shouldn't move around at all, flip-flop around. One of the things I was thinking of was like, well, I could tape it down, but that just felt really sketchy. Uh, what this advantage is, it's secure down all the tone knobs and stuff are still functional and it will fit if i wanted to uh the customer didn't doesn't use a battery so the battery compartment isn't needed but you could all right and then so one of the tricks also was like well how do i do the switches so it still looks like a um you know ex external enclosure of a clon so i came up with this little solution i didn't have the right angle um, switches on hand but I don't think that actually would have worked uh, in some of the cases like over here because they make PCB ones with like a, a right angle and I'm sure that would have been okay right here but so what I did was I extended I had um, a bunch over here <laughs> this is just from clipping all the amps and stuff that I've been building I just I keep a you know a handful on hand um and these are thick, not your standard, you know, quarter inch or quarter watt resistors. These are ones from like orange drop uh, capacitors and things. So they're pretty long um, and thick, which makes them pretty rigid as well. So I undid all the screws and all the hardware on here because I don't want any chance of them getting loose inside here. Um, so I, I took them all off, <clears throat> reducing the risk. And I just sort of soldered and made my own right angle connector going the distance that I needed to. And the same thing with over here. I got it up and out of the way. Obviously, the enclosure or the, uh, the case of the switch isn't touching anything, um, which is another good advantage uh, of doing it this way because I was able to angle it the way I, I wanted to out of the way. Um, and then for marking it, I got the inside here. Uh, you know, for base, stock, base plus plus, and then on this side for the clipping, you know, what the different selections are based on. Uh, so on the, on the left-hand side here would be the stock clipping, and then all the way over here would be the mod clipping, and then the same with the base. So that's my approach on this guy. Uh, I'm going to take a little break and start soldering up the power connector and then attaching the jacks and maybe even the foot switch so this one's coming together pretty quickly it, it did take a little bit of thought process to try to make it all work um but yeah this thing's coming out nice i can't wait for the uh the customer to rip on this thing all right so i just finished this up um basically installed everything and and clamped it down I used my uh, internal tooth um, lock washers there. Sorry, brain cramp. 
after all this, maybe uh, inhaling too much of this lead-infused solder. Um, but anyway, so what I did was I, I did a little strain relief over here to keep the LED in place, and then I used a little super glue on there. It's a kind of a metal surface. I don't know how well super glue attached to the surface um, to hold that LED in place, but it uh, has never failed me in the past, so I don't expect it to fail this time. I also put, um, because this ring, uh, this nut is on, um, oops, a little st wet still, uh, it's on plastic that could, I don't know, I don't trust it very much. So just, I always like to put either super glue on there or hot glue just to prevent that from sliding back. And if that slides off, well, guess what? Gravity will make connections with that nut. It's metal, so the positive and negative lead will short out, and then boom, there goes your power supply. So again, some of the things I, I do, um, I'm kind of, I'm not sure. I'm going to pay attention a lot to, to make sure that there's no ground loops. Because of the distance between these two, um, I don't necessarily need a connection to the ground over here which could make a ground loop because here's you know this is grounded that to over here and this is a metal case um so that could create problems i don't know but i'm gonna be careful and listen for any sort of ground loops um ground loops within pedals is fairly uncommon but i can't imagine it uh would be non-existent so i'm gonna again just go to the extra mile make sure i pay attention now, for the top, so this is what we're looking at here. I had a few of these circuit boards made up um, of just the foot switch because I was originally going to have the TS-10 that I ended up with have like a raised foot switch sort of look to it. I ultimately um, did not go with that approach just because that would be sandwiching layers and then the manufacturing would be a little bit more... Um, intensive because I would have to glue the layers together and make sure it's square and I um, opted not to do that but I had these around so I shot the customer over a couple pictures of this and he loved it and it reminds us a lot of the um, like the aerial poison po poison poison um, pedal where they have sort of the same color scheme going on so that's kind of cool it, so I removed this Centura and if you ever you should pick up some of this because it does a great job of removing the um, silk screen that ink was really tough to get off I tried using paint thinner I tried using rubbing alcohol and it didn't take it off so what I ended up with was this never dull it's great stuff um and then funny enough it actually didn't polish the metal too much i mean it polished it a little bit but it, i've used this in the past on bare metal enclosures and it's it made it almost chrome um so there must be something else going on in this the, the way that uh cheerio tone uh has these made but it didn't affect anything else other than just remove the silk screen so i did that now it just says the Tone Geek. Pretty cool. Uh, signature green LED. It's going to be super uh, effing bright. I can't swear on here. I uh, lose points. Um, but yeah, the, so I hope the customer is pretty happy with this. I'm sure he is. And uh, if you know him, then you're going to find out who it is very shortly uh, after he receives it. So that's what we got going on. Thank you for watching. I'll do more videos uh, in 2021.